Now, this next paper will not be easy to read at all because it's entirely different. It is written without the usual reason and, and logic of Greek thinking. It's written more in the Oriental way. But the paper is right on. And this is written to the heart, by the way, and not to the intellect. It, to try to understand this with the intellect will drive you crazy. And is the reason why the rabbis have always said one doesn't get into metaphysics unless he's willing to go all the way to the end. So listen gently. This is written to the heart, much as the Tao Te Ching was written to the heart. Mind and thinking are two that are one. Yet thinking is clearly subservient to mind within which it functions. Breath and breathing are two that are one. Yet breathing is clearly subservient to breath when with, within which it functions effortlessly. Now, if one equates breathing with thinking, he perceives that at any given moment he is either exhaling or inhaling. And that is exactly the same difference between male and female. Together, each includes the other and needs the other, whereas separately they long to be fulfilled within the other, and they are separate only in any given moment of time. Mind, God, and thinking, man, are separate only in time, longing for the fulfillment of the other. We let go separateness and equally let go the given moment to be fulfilled in God. Thinking comes to rest in mind where it has been all the while perfectly secure and untroubled. It is the separate longing of thinking to be all that mind is that has led to the inferior state wherein thinking is filled with guilt instead of mind. We let go the longing to know what can't be known and come to rest in mind. We let go thinking, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we let thinking know what thinking is and then it knows as it is known. You see, we are the thinking of God, but we've been trying to make ourselves God and to know all of the mysteries of God. Thinking is not the whole of mind, but mind is the whole of thinking. When thinking knows itself fully, the tree of life returns to rest in mind. Never can thinking know all that God is, but it knows most when it knows what thinking is. The attempt to know what God knows leads to frustration and woe, but the attempt to rest in mind leads straight to eternal life. Well, now, how do I know this is so? If I rest in breathing, I breathe gently in and out, out and in, without taking thought and without suffering. If I take aim to make breathing equal to breath, well, suddenly I have two. I have exhaling and inhaling. I identify as one or the other. And I have just made a given moment in time. Well, identified as one or the other, like male or female, I look for, for fulfillment in the other rather than in breath, where I had fulfillment without anguish or suffering. But while looking for fulfillment in either exhaling or inhaling, I find myself in physical need, suffering or not suffering, and all degrees between. Aren't mankind's anguishes wrapped up in gender wants and wishes, pains, joys, and fulfillments that last an instant? Where is any peace in that? Thinking is divided into two. And then 4, then 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and gridlock. So I stop. I return to source. I rest where I began. I find peace. I thank Godhead for God and I. I embrace my world and bless it. I hold it sacred for God. 
a cosmology of the original exegesis of events. Before the beginning, beingness was. Beingness knows itself fully and perfectly. Knowingness, therefore, is implanted within beingness, and beingness within knowingness. And these two are one. These two are only. Now, being said to its own self-knowing, show me that I know I am, or prove to me I know what I am, or show me that I am that I am. Now, in that day, finite life came into being, and that light became the measure of light. Time and space were born, and knowing came alive in the discipline. The discipline is the learning of knowing, the human experience in time. Knowing permeated being. I'm sorry, I'll start that again. Knowing permeated by being is unable to see the entirety of being without first knowing what knowing is. Knowing looks out with its limited light at the qualities and the attributes of being. It looks out also at the qualities and attributes of knowing. Looking out and looking in, listening out and listening in, speaking out and speaking in, feeling out and feeling in, sensing or living, is the discipline and process. Living is knowing, and knowing is living. Knowing and living are one being, self-known in self-examination. Identity is this, and there is no other identity. Life is this, and there is no other life. Existence is this, and there is no other existence. The discipline is motivated by the desire to know the self. Knowing in process is necessarily incomplete. Incomplete knowing, like inhaling or exhaling, seems separate from being and desires to be all that being is. That desire is called the mist. Desire obfuscates, prolongs, and educates the discipline. All the while, limited light is merely the image of light. Limited light moves, but the light it measures doesn't move at all. The mist deprives knowing of directly sensing being. Sensing, therefore, does not see it but sees only the qualities and attributes of it, often believing them to be it. The qualities and attributes are symbols of it, and it is self-known from the symbol. To understand the symbols is to understand the body, but the body is not in the symbols. To understand the body is to understand it, but it is not in the body. It has been this way since the beginning of time, and it will be this way until the end of time. Time ends when the sensing body ends its sensing. Time is in it, but it is not in time. To know it is to know male and female. Male and female are in it, and it is in male and female. And these three are one. Male is female and female is male. And these two are one. Male is male, and female is female, and these two are two. These two are the symbols of the one. They exist in the one, but the one is real, and the symbols pass away. 